back on the MSC Maravilia. So this is our second time on this boat and our third MSC cruise. And we're going to tell you 10 things that you absolutely have to know before you book this cruise. Let's get started. So the first thing you should know is if at all possible, take the four day cruise instead of the three day cruise. Yeah, that's right. So the, the four day cruise runs Sunday through Thursday and the three day is Thursday through Sunday morning. And in our experience, the three day was way more crowded. Uh, the four day cruise was much more pleasant. Yes. Second of all, muster is a ship show. This drill is mandatory. Everyone must participate in this drill. This drill is mandatory. Thank you. I think this muster has been longer than last muster because bars have been shut since 6, 6.45. It was still, like when they called, the, they did something different this time. They like called you by floor to go to muster. Right, last I, time they called the entire ship at the same time. But I think it was more of a disaster this time than last time. Like, it was so insanely crowded. Like, this is just not necessary. If we had our own boat, which we don't, this is the theory that we have that we get people through muster, like, lickety-split. If you've been to muster, like, the bars don't close. So if you've been to muster, you get served drinks. And if not, the bartender says, sorry, we can't serve you until you get through muster. Brilliant. Now let's talk about the food. So overall, the food at the buffet um, has been good. So it, the pizza has been one of my mm, favorites, and the, really the pasta was super good. I mean, it is an Italian cruise line, so that would have to be great for sure. Um, so I think that most people will be happy with the buffet. We did buy three specialty dining um, packages for each person that here. Yeah, they offered a special before we um, before we got on board. So it was seventy nine dollars each, and you got three specialty restaurants um, right. for the four night cruise. So we ate at Teppanyaki, the steakhouse and Mexican, Mexican food, yep. Ola Mexican. Teppanyaki was fantastic. We really enjoyed that experience on a cruise ship and this did not disappoint. Tons and tons of food, like an overabundance of food. We had our regular starters of like the miso soup and the salad, and then they had sushi a came next. sushi, sashimi, yep. and then another seafood course of either salmon or sea bass with vegetables. And that after we were done with that it was like that was the perfect meal and then we, on top of that then we had the fried rice and whatever meat you know shrimp steak chicken whatever you selected tons of food on that one yeah bring your appetite for that because it's delicious though. yeah it was definitely delicious um so then the next night we did the steakhouse mm -hmm. and that was fantastic too i had the filet mignon it was super delicious you know, i had a new york strip or sirloin or something and it wasn't quite as good i ended up eating half of Lindsay's. And um. <laughs> as much food as there was at Teppanyaki, there was like half of that at the at the steakhouse. Plenty of food for sure. Um, but I don't know if it was my favorite steakhouse experience. Um, and then last night we ate at the Ola Mexican food restaurant. Have a seat folks, here it comes. <laughs> it was horrendous. Most of it was unedible. It was, it was just terrible. I ordered the enchiladas, ate one because I was starving and everybody's food was just Terrible. No one was happy with that meal, and we certainly would not recommend no, having no. the Mexican as your specialty restaurant Definitely. here. Is that we both love the private island Ocean Key. Um, it's a, a little less developed than some of the other cruise lines, and it's it's really beautiful. We had a fun day. We actually stay overnight mm -hmm. there, also with a lighthouse right. show at night. Big big plus for the private island. For There's so much natural beauty. They've got some cool bars there. All of the food is included there, and it's just a really great experience. We loved it. We took floaties this time because the water is just gorgeous, shallow water. It was a super fun time. Number five is the adults-only pool at the aft of the ship. If you're not traveling with children, this is a great place to come and hang out. This three-day cruise that we've been on has had a lot more kids on it than the in the four-day that we did. Um, not to say that it's always quiet back here, but it is normally food-free. Uh, the Wi-Fi even works well on the island. You have to log out and log back into a separate server on the island, but then you're good. Uh, the only quirk is some people have had trouble getting connected. So get connected early because if not, there could be a long line at the help desk. Um, there is a great bar here called the Sky Lounge. Yes. Um, I love that. That's sitting up above the pool area. And at nighttime, they had a, a band there that I really liked. 
That's a three-piece band, very classic, French singer, highly recommend best, that. Yes, that's the best for David, for sure. All right, so tip number eight on this cruise is that the hallways are a maze. Like, not amazing, it's a literal maze. You could get lost back here. So normally on cruise ships, you've got one hallway, you've got the balcony facing, you've got the interior. In our room, we're in an aft facing balcony this time. There are three hallways that lead to our room. Yeah, it's a very confusing, and I think it's because the interior cabins, there's multiple interiors rather than just one balcony and one interior. Book a room close to the elevators. We did pay for some specialty entertainment, um, and that was super fantastic. It was the, um, I forgot the name. It was like a Cirque du Soleil show. Uh -huh. um, the singers were great. That was actually really, really good. Very nice. Um, it's weird that you had to pay an extra 10 bucks. $18. Oh, $18. And you, got, you did get one drink with it. A beverage cocktail. Yeah, that's supposed to be a specialty beverage. That was crap. Don't listen yeah, to yeah, it was terrible. Um, but the actual performance, that theater was smaller and it was just, it was really quaint and very good production, definitely. Yeah, so way better than the main, than the main theater Broadway. So that entertainment was good. And then no, also the other thing is like, there haven't been like other entertainment shows like comedy shows or like the newlyweds game or whatever those are. Yeah, or no family or theater, to, right? all that. The um, common areas are, that was kind of a complaint that I had. So all of the common areas, like they're big open spaces. There's nowhere that is like really unique and like grabs your attention to draw you in. Like they're all, everything is kind of decorated the same. The seats are kind of uncomfortable. Like the, there's, it's lacking in like places to gather. And the main lobby area here, which on a typical cruise ship is like, like that's kind of your gathering point, it feels like, the where like the piano yep. bar is, or like the piano is, and there's a band every night. And, and how that is situated here is like, it's, it's three levels high, but in the main floor, there's like three seating groups. Yeah, so that, that was kind of odd. I mean, even compared to the last MSC we did in the Divina, it seemed like that was a real social area yes, with tons yes. of seating and you know you could sit around the edges and all that because that's where people still congregate here but yes. there's just not room for everybody so it's really loud and there's not enough seating and that's just fresh espresso you cannot even cannot even with this you can't even can't even with this <laughs> 